time to cover now in about two hours. So tomorrow I'll be completing this. So we have seen what is meant by indexing today, what is indexing and the mechanism which is to be used, how that works with very simple sketches. You can refer to the book for more details. And also we have seen two methods of uh, indexing, the plane indexing with the numerical problem and compound indexing with the rule. This is the rule, rule for compound indexing. We have seen this. We will solve a problem on uh, compound indexing tomorrow. So we will try to complete this entire indexing tomorrow. Okay. So have a good day and a safe day. Thank you.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, students. So today we'll be starting with angular measurements. In all the previous uh, chapters, we have discussed linear measurement, just like uh, we use a scale, a steel rule, a vernier caliper, a micrometer. All these are used for measuring linear dimensions. So they say in GDNT that uh, if you are able to draw a line, if you are able to draw an arc, okay. So basically, a line and an arc can be used to draw anything in an engineering drawing. Take for example, if you are able to measure a line, you are good in linear measurements. If you are able to measure a line as well as an arc, you are good in metallurgy. So similarly, over here, whenever we want to measure an arc, we face a problem of angle. So what is an angle? Angle is basically two rays of line originating from a vertex. So the angle form, the sketch form between two lines originating from a single point is called as an angle. So this is the vertex, the origin is called the vertex and the two lines coming out of these vertex form a subtant, form an angle. Okay, today we are going to find out the different methods and different instruments that we can use to measure these angles. So this is about uh, linear and angular measurements. So different types of angles. Over here, you have come across acute angle, right angle, as well as obtuse angle. Any angle above 90 degree and uh, below 180 degree is called as obtuse. Angle between 0 and 90 degree is called as acute angle. A perfect 90 degree is called as a right angle. And a perfect 180 degree is called as a straight angle. And 360 degree is called as a full angle. Anything that falls between 180 degree and 360 degree is reflex angle. So these are the I think uh, even straight angle and full angle you might have uh, studied in your high school. Even the acute, right, as well as obtuse angle. Reflex angle is might, might be a new term for you. So the angle that is greater than 180 and less than 360. So this is a reflex angle. Okay. So now, what is the unit to measure angle? So usually we use degrees, 30 degree, 40 degree. Uh, with respect to acute angle or obtuse angle, okay? So, in order to convert an angle to a millimeter, in GDNT we never use any other units except for millimeters or microns. So, if you want to convert any angle to a linear measurement, then we have to go for radians. If not, if, uh, if it is only an angle, then we can go with degrees, minutes and seconds. So what do you mean by a degree? So if you take a complete circle, a complete circle can be divided into 360 points across its circumference. So each three is spaced equally. So each point can be called as a degree. So each degree can be further split into 60 parts, each part being 160th of a degree. So equally divided. So these parts are called as minutes. Further, each minute is further split into 60 parts and each part being 160th of a minute. So this is the smallest possible angle that we can measure and this is called as seconds. So each degree, so a particular degree, uh, circle is divided into 360 degree and each uh, graduation is called as a degree and each degree can be further split into 60 parts and these 60 parts can be further divided into another 60 parts called minutes and seconds. So why do we need angular measurements? See, usually till now we have discussed angular measurement in terms of degrees or radians. We said, so this is the angle between this particular surface and one more surface. And keep in mind, there is always a reference. 
So over here you can see one of the lines will be used as a reference and with respect to that the other line uses the angle at which it is subtended. So many a cases we don't really require the angle but we require the alignment with respect to a particular reference. In uh, mechanical assembly or as, uh, even in production the primary objective of an angle measurement is not to measure angles in mechanical uh, metrology. The case in the assessment of alignment of machine parts. So in machine parts, alignment plays an important role. Measurement of straightness, parallelism and flatness of machine parts. As we go further, we will try to understand how flatness, straightness and flat, uh, parallelism plays a vital role with respect to the angular measurements. Flatness of machine parts requires highly sensitive instruments such as auto collimators. So these are uh, optical instruments. You might be knowing that mechanical, uh, op sorry, optical instruments are uh, you higher rate of uh, higher degree of accuracy than uh, mechanical instruments. The angle reading from such an instrument is measure of error of alignment. So this is why angular measurement is necessary. So these are some of the angular measuring instruments, the first one being a protractor, a very commonly used uh, instrument. So you have been using it from your uh, primary as well as high school days. Uh, oh, the pro uh, protractor you have uh, three things, very important things. The first one is the vertex. If you want to draw a particular angle, you start with a point and you keep the center of the protractor at that particular point and that particular point is called as vertex. Then you draw a straight line that is your reference line and finally the required angle is drawn that will give you the angle. So next we have universal bevel protractor. It's a slight modification of a protractor called as universal bevel protractor. So universal bevel protractor helps you to increase the accuracy of the protractor. Next we have sign bar and sign center. So both sign bar as well as sign center is based on the principle of sign rule. Okay, so as you know sine theta is equal to the height by the hypotenuse. Then we have clinometers, spirit level and autocollimator. So clinometer is again a modification of a protractor and it is used to find out the angle for uh, different applications specifically in uh, civil engineering applications. Then we have spirit level. So a, mo a most uh, simple type of angular measuring system and finally auto collimator. This is an optical and also uh, in some cases they also use laser to improve the accuracy. So these are some of the angle measuring instruments. Protractor. So as you have seen many a times, the least amount of protractor is one degree, the commonly used protractor. But if you go for uh, bigger protractors used in uh, machine shops, sorry, shop floors, it can have a least amount of up to half degree accuracy. And this is similar to a steel rule, most basic type of uh, instrument to measure the angle. A simple protractor has limited usage in engineering metrology due to the restrict, uh, it restricts ourselves to the least amount of maximum of half degree. However, a few modifications, a few additions and a simple mechanism just like we see in uh, Vernia caliper, it is just a simple steel rule. Along with that they are going to use a Vernier scale. Similarly in this case we will be using a similar Vernier scale which can hold a main scale, a vernier scale and a rotatable blade which can make it very versatile and improve its accuracy. So this is a sketch of uh, image of universal bevel protractor. Over here you can see I am holding a universal bevel protractor. If you observe very closely you can see over here we have a main scale, this is the main scale, 
We also have a vernier scale. In the next slide, we'll be able to see clearly the main scale as well as the vernier scale readings properly. So this is used basically to measure angles up to an accuracy of five minutes. The least count is five minutes for a vernier bevel protractor or one twelfth of a degree. Okay, so we have a base over here. You can see this is the base and this is the blade which helps us to find the accurate angle. Over here we have a locking nut. This is the locking nut. Okay, and also we have a, an eyepiece over here. You can see whatever I'm holding in my hand, this has an eyepiece. This eyepiece helps us to clearly see the coinciding vernier division. So vernier bevel angle protractor is to measure angles. The universal bevel protractor is capable of measuring with an accuracy of five minutes or one twelfth of a degree. So we'll find out further uh, how we arrived at this particular value that is five minutes, the least count. So theoretically, this is how the main scale, sorry, this is the main scale, okay? And this is the vernier scale in minutes. So as we have discussed in, uh, we just take the, take the concept of uh, vernier caliper, similar to vernier caliper, we can assume each division to be five minutes. But you might have a question, sir, how exactly is this five minutes? That explanation is given over here. So right now we'll just assume it to be five minutes. Okay, so this is the main scale. You can see over here, zero degree, one, two, three, and so on till 10, 20, and so on. So you have a complete 360 degree angle in your vernier bevel protractor. So, but as you can see over here, on both the sides, that is on the left side as well as on the right side, we have 10, 20, 10, 20, and it ends up exactly at 90 degree, and again starts on, decreases from 90 to zero. So basically you cannot see complete 360 on a vernier bevel protractor. You can see zero to 90 and 90 to zero, and again zero to 90 and 90 to zero. This is how the 360 degrees divided. So you can see over here, from zero to 60, 60 minutes, there are 12 divisions. One, two, three, this is uh, 15. So each division is five. That's what I was saying. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25, 30. This is uh, 45 and finally 60, 60th minute. So you can see over here on the right side, we have 12 divisions and on the left side, we have 12 divisions, a total of 24 divisions. So 24 vernier divisions corresponds to 46 main scale reading. So you can see over here, uh, 0, 10, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Okay. And similarly, on the other side, we have 23. Over here, you can, this is actually coinciding at 22, but this is not exactly at 22, this is 23. So 23 on each side gives us 46 main scale division and 24 vernier scale divisions. Let us assume that the zero division on the both the main and the vernier scale are lined up co to coincide with each other. You can see over here, both zero of the main scale and zero of the vernier scale are coinciding with each other. Now, if you start rotating this dial, you can see over here, the 60th uh, minute is already coinciding when zero is coinciding. Similarly, on the other side, the 60th is already coinciding. So you might have a confusion on which direction we have to read. So I'll clear that at a later stage. Now, as you can see, as the dial rotates, a vernier division starting from the fifth minute up to the 60th minute. So from here till the 60th minute, continuously one or the other uh, vernier division will be coinciding progressively coincides with the main scale division until the zero division on the vernier scale moves over the main scale. So until it reaches the next division, the next marking, there will be one or the other vernier division coinciding. Okay? So therefore, the least count is a difference between one vernier division and two main scale divisions, which is one twelfth of a degree or five minutes. Okay? Mathematically, you can see over here, least count can be calculated using, this is uh, vernier scale division, number of divisions is 12 vernier scale division, which is equal to 23 main scale divisions. We are talking about only one side, 
either on the left side or on the right side, not on both the sides. So one vernier scale division is equal to 23 by 12 degree. So basically, this count is given by one main scale division into two minus one vernier scale division, which gives out the value of one twelfth of a degree or five minutes. So mathematically, you can say that this is the value of the least count in a vernier bevel protractor, and you can understand the concept quite clearly over here. So value of one main scale division is one degree. On each side, we have twelve divisions. So total number of divisions on the vernier scale is 24. Total number of divisions that is coinciding is on the main scale is 46 uh, degrees or 46 divisions. So that calculation will lead us to this particular value. Okay. So it is quite similar to your uh, vernier scale. Only thing is vernier scale we have a linear dimension, whereas in uh, vernier bevel protractor we have a circular vernier. Okay, so if you observe, even in any of the vernier bevel protractor, we have 12 divisions on the vernier scale. We are considering only 12 on one side. We should not consider both the sides. Okay. So how to read a vernier bevel protractor? So over here you can see the zero of the vernier is in between 20 and 30. Okay, if you observe quite clearly, I'll share this PPT with you, uh, students, so you can observe clearly that zero is somewhere between 27 and 28. Okay, so this is zero, 10, 20. Somewhere over here, I have the coinciding zero, so this is 28, and over here you can see it has been indica indicated with a red dot, the line with the 30th minute. is coinciding so this is you, you need not uh, calculate anything direct readings is possible so each division on the vernier scale is 5 minutes and any division that is coinciding with the main scale will directly give out the value in minutes so you can directly say this is 28 degrees and 30 minute so if the next division is coinciding immediately after the 30th that is 35 the second division after 30 will give you 40 and so on so this is quite simple much easier than uh, vernier caliper for uh, understanding the way in which we read a vernier bevel protractor so if you read i have one question yes sir can we read 42 degrees 32 minutes no sir yes the reason why we cannot read this particular value as sir mentioned i should have discussed this as i said the minimum value is 5 minutes so the multiples of 5 can be read so 30 35 40 45 50 and so on if you want a much bigger accuracy then you have to go for much better instruments similarly in vernier caliper you might have understood that you can only read the values which ends with the second uh, digit after the decimal place with 02468 isn't it similarly in case vernier bevel protractor we can only measure 30 oh, sorry 0 5 10 15 20 25 30 40 45 50 55 60 minutes. minutes we are not into seconds right now we are just into only into degrees and minutes and minutes that to in division of 5 so what are the Yes, the limitations that we need to understand with respect to bevel protractor, we cannot measure second. Yes, sir. Second, we cannot have uh, values less than five. In this True. Sense, we can only go in stretch of zero, five, ten minutes. Yes. Twenty right up till thirty. Sixty. Uh, right up till uh, sixty minutes. We can. Forty, forty-five, fifty, and fifty-five, sixty. Yes. But in between is not possible, and second is not. Second is absolutely not possible in this case. And whatever reading that we get. can be perfect up to this particular value if you read the main scale in an anti clockwise direction see you always go from zero to some value it might be from zero, uh, left to right or right to left okay in whichever direction you choose say for example over here i start this is the zero 
and 0 to 30, 40 moves in this direction. So, 0 and I have to move in the clockwise direction. Okay? So, that is what he says. If you read the main scale in an anti-clockwise direction, read the vernier scale also in an anti-clockwise direction from the 0. If you read the main scale in a clockwise direction, read the vernier scale also in the clockwise direction from 0. So, if you start reading, so this is 0. So, I am moving in this direction. So, this is 0, 0 of the vernier scale. So, it is somewhere between 25 and 30. So, I have moved in the clockwise direction. So, while measuring, while finding out the coinciding vernier division, I should not move from 0 to 60 in this direction. I have to move from 0 to 60 in this particular what clockwise is direction. Value this time? Now, we are seeing from, I want to know whether you have to right or right to left. In this case, uh, how do you say whether to read from right to left or left to right? Now, in this in this situation, whether I should read from left to right or should I read from right to left? Left to right. Sir. The reason is you can see over here measure this angle, this angle, this angle yes, which is acute angle. Yes, which is acute angle. So my question here is whether should I? Uh, this looks like an acute angle for me. Okay. So for me, I would like to read from the left to right. Whether I am right or not. Okay. So, uh, as you can see over here, the first thing that we will do is we set the zero of vernier with zero of the main scale. Okay. Just keep on observing how the dial moves. So it moves from zero to thirty. We'll not worry about acute angle or obtuse angle. Okay. We'll just observe how the zero moves. Zero on the vernier scale moves. It moves in clockwise direction. So the reading should be in clockwise direction. That is between uh, 20 and 30, so that is uh, 28. And again, the coinciding division should also be measured from left to right, that is in clockwise direction. So, as simple as that, we don't require the concept of acu uh, acute angle or obtuse angle, but it is as simple as that. The direction in which you move, the direction, if you read the main scale in an anti clockwise direction, read the vernier scale also in anti clockwise direction. Okay? Clear? We'll go further. So, over here, take a quick review. Take yes, quick review, please. Uh, we have a covered protractor. Uh, this is the uh, regular school protractor that we have used. And its least count is 1 degree. It is not much used in uh, uh, our engineering metrology. And uh, next comes, immediate next level we go for our uh, measurement is uh, 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 universal bevel protractor or vernier bevel protractor. Its least count is 5 degrees. How to how we get 5 degrees? We have already shown it. Yes, okay. Uh, the, the vernier scale has 12 divisions on one side, another 12 divisions on another side. 23 divisions is equal to 2 degrees, right? Yes. Sir. So this 23 divided by 24 and uh, uh, 2 degrees minus this should give us the uh, least, least count. count. Least count. Yes. But if we forget all those things, a simple way to understand this is it gives us that value in minutes and in the steps of five minutes okay so this is understood next may I, it has uh, both main scale as well as vernier scale here we we have only one scale uh, in case of our uh, regular protractor there is only one scale that is main scale we don't have vernier next uh, in vernier scale as i said uh, you already mentioned that it is 12 divisions on the right side and divisions on the left side next so this is the calculation part this is so one of the uh, Either we call it advantage or disadvantage. Advantage is that it is better than our regular protractor, protractor. and it is used for our engineering applications. But uh, uh, drawback is that it has a limitation of measuring only up to five, uh, five minutes. And the sub uh, values of uh, five minutes, steps of five minutes is not possible. Like one, two, three, four minutes or anything Maybe. beyond like seven, eight, nine is not possible. We can go in steps of five minutes, 10 or 20. So. For example, 42 degrees, 32 minutes, if it is to be found out, it cannot be done. We can always say it is either 40 degrees or 42 degrees, uh, 30 minutes. We can say either 42 degrees, 30 minutes, or we can say 42 degrees, 35 minutes, but uh, we will not be able to measure this accurately. But certainly, uh, 35 is possible, 42 degrees, uh, 43 degrees, 50 minutes, likewise is possible. So, if we want to go for further... Uh, Accuracy levels, probably we need to go for next level. Better measurements. Yes. Thank you. So again, a quick uh, review of uh, reading vernier scales once again. So consider the situation shown in figure. So in previously, 
we had an example of uh, clockwise. Over here, we have an example of anti-clockwise. Just a minute. So you can consider the situation shown in this particular figure. The zeroth division. So how to read this particular vernier or the vernier bevel protractor? So as I said previously, if zero on the vernier moves from left to right, that is in clockwise direction, then we have to check the coinciding vernier division from zero to the right side of the zero, that is 60. There might be some readings, some uh, divisions which might be coinciding, we should not worry about those. Okay, so consider the situation shown in figure. The zeroth of the vernier is just past the 10 degree. So it is between 10 and 11. But you can see over here, the zero on the main scale and the coinciding zero on the vernier scale is to the left side. Now we are supposed to read it in anti-clockwise direction. As simple as that, okay. The seventh division marked as 35 division on the left hand side of the vernier scale coincides. So you can see over here, this is between 0 and uh, 10 and 11. So it should be 10 something, some minutes. If you go on seeing, there might be some division. You can see over here, the 30th mark, immediately after the 30th mark, the 35th mark is coinciding. That means the value is 10 degree 35 minutes. Very simple. The only thing that you have to remember is the least count and each division represents five minutes. The coinciding division gives us the value in minutes and uh, the zero of the vernier scale gives us the value of the main value that is between 10 and 11. So therefore the particular reading in this case is 10 degree and 35 minutes. I hope uh, the students are uh, able to understand it much easier than uh, a vernier caliper. So just the same thing whatever we have discussed. The, the type of material. Yes, sir. And I forgot to inform one more uh, important thing about uh, this. Okay, students, the important thing about this material is we either use tool steel or OHNS, oil hardened non shrinkage steel. So these two steels, usually they don't tend to change its dimensions under normal temperature conditions. So usually in a uh, in particular country, the temperature range is from 18 to 35. And if you go to some colder places, it might reach up to zero degree. So this OHNS as well as tool steel does not change its dimension so quickly under zero to even up to 40 or 45 degree. So that is the advantage of using tool steel in manufacturing of these instruments, tool steel or even OHNS, oil hardened non shrinkage steel. So the type of uh, heat treatment that they provide is using oil annealing and it is non-shrinkable and it is slightly brittle in nature. Most of the two steels you, you might have observed, all the steels are slightly brittle. And regarding this particular uh, instrument, you can see there is two angles and if you observe in most of the cases, there will be multiple uses of a particular instrument. In the case of vernier caliper, you can use it for measuring the linear measurement, the diameter, inside diameter, outside diameter, even the depth. You can use a vernier caliper as a depth gauge. Similarly, this can be used, over here you can see two angles. I'll uh, just project the shadow. The shadow might be much better. You can see over here there are two angles. It is not the same. The first one is a 45 degree angle. To your right, you see the 45 degree, and to your left, you have a 60 degree set. So say for example, if you want to only check a particular angle, 45 degree, you can just insert this particular blade. You can see this blade is movable. Insert into that particular uh, slot, and you can check whether it is a perfect 45 degree, just like you used it for 
a thread gauge, a thread measurement. Okay, similarly for 60 degree. Okay, and over here the eyepiece helps us to easily identify without much uh, chances of parallax, easily identify what is the exact coinciding vernier division. This can also be called as an optical vernier uh, bevel protractor. Just uh, eyepiece will uh, convert a regular bevel protractor into optical bevel protractor. So for those who have uh, any confusion, a quick uh, review. Confusion arises regarding direction in which the vernier has to be read. This confusion may crop up for the forementioned example also. It is possible that a division on the right side of the zero on the vernier scale may be coinciding with a division on the main scale. Okay. So in the previous case, we read from right to left. There is all possibility that on the other side also there can be a coinciding vernier division. So we need not worry too much about it. In order to eliminate this confusion, we follow a simple rule. Always read the vernier from zero in the same direction that you read the main scale or the dial scale. As simple as that. If you move from left to right, move in the vernier direction also, in the vernier scale also, left to right. If you move the uh, main scale from right to left, you see the coinciding from right to left. As simple as that. Yes. The same experiment is there. Uh, so over here we have a simple uh, example, a simple angle we have set up. So before I, uh, I think we can uh, conduct a small experiment over here. Over here we have a clinometer. This is called a clinometer. Oh, you can see over here this is just like your protractor. Instead of directly reading it, you have a pointer which always stays vertical, irrespective of for in which direction you rotate. Okay, so whatever value that you choose, the whatever value you find out should be subtracted by 90 degrees. Okay, so at the bottom you can see there's a magnetic uh, base. This magnetic base helps us to easily keep the clinometer and fix the clinometer on the surface of the object. So over here you can see I have just placed it. I am supposed to keep this on a surface plate, but for uh, right now I am just keeping it as it is. You can see over here the angle is 0 and this is 90, so in between 90 and 110. Okay, so this is exactly 108. So 90 minus 108 will give you the, sorry, 108 minus 90 will give you the exact value. Yes, sir, 80. So this is 18 degree. So over here, the same value, the same object is used. So this is the clamp. I'm uh, releasing the clamp. I'm inserting my object. Okay, over here you can see now clearly this is the reference and this is the angle that has been set. So now, I'll just read out the, what is the value. I'm supposed to read from right to left, okay? So this is uh, 0, 10, and 18, 18 degree, and uh, the coinciding division is 45. 45 minutes, I think, uh, yeah, 45 minutes. So with this, this is, the, this is the same experiment that you are going to conduct. After that, you are going to find the same angle with respect to, first you are going to find the value using a clinometer. You will get the value in degrees. Then you use a vernier bevel protractor. Find the same angle using a vernier bevel protractor and you will find out the value in degrees and minutes. Next, what you are going to do is, you are using a sign bar, a much sophisticated uh, instrument, wherein you are finding the value in seconds also. It is an indirect method, but still it is reliable. Okay? So let's take a quick quiz. Over here, the diagram shows part of a vernier bevel protractor scale. 
he is asking for the exact reading. So, just have a look, observe carefully. So, 0 is between 80 and 90. Okay? So, somewhere between exactly, somewhere between 85 and 86. So, can I say the first with respect to degrees is 85 degree, since it is between 85 and 86. Okay, we have multiple answers, we will not worry about these uh, MCQs. 85 and 86. Since the direction of reading is from right to left, in the anti-clockwise direction, we are supposed to work out only the vernier square to our left. So, you, over here you can see the coinciding division is 30, exactly 30. So, it is 85 degree and 30 minutes. We have this value, 85 degree and 30 minutes. And also we have some more values, 86 and uh, it cannot be 86 and 20. This is uh, 20, this is not coinciding at all. Sorry, this is 20, right? So, the value is 85 degree and 30 minutes. So, this is the right answer. It cannot be 82 or 86, okay? So you can see, sometimes you might get confused, start reading from this side, then you might say, this is 94 and 95. So this is not possible, because the next value is 80. So it has to be from right to left. Okay? One more example, but in the opposite direction. You can see that both examples that we are discussing, yes sir, yes, sir. immediately after this idea. Yeah. So you can see from uh, right to left we had taken an example from left to right, this is the clockwise direction. You can see in the previous example, 80 was here, 90 was here, we are moving in the opposite direction, over here 30 and 40. So from left to right, so nothing to worry, so 30 and 32, 32, okay. So somewhere between 31 and 32, this is not exactly coinciding, okay. So this is 31 degree and some minutes. So over here we have three choices, 31 degree, 35, 55 and 20. Let's try to find out. You can see over here the fifth minute is not coinciding 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45 is very close but still it is not coinciding. 50 is also close. 55 is the exact one. So 31 degree and 55 minute. I think we have a choice over here. You can see over here 35, this is 35. It is not coinciding at all. Next we have 25, even this is not coinciding. And 20 minutes. So this is 5, 10, 15 and 20. Even this is not coinciding. So all the, out of all the four, you can just uh, see only the minute part and you can easily guess the answer. Okay? So the exact answer is 31 degree and 55 minutes. So this particular uh, instrument helps us to find out what exactly the accuracy value is up to 5 minutes or 1 twelfth of a degree. So, what is the approximate cost of universal bevel protractor? So, if it's a very simple one that we use in our uh, metrology lab, it might cost around 4,000 to 16,000 Indian rupee. And the one that we use is Mitutoyo. Uh, you, can, you might have observed the quality of finishing as well as the surface finish. The surface finish, the surface finish is very high. So usually it may cost around 16,000. This might be the price. Uh, less than four to, four to, four to, four to five, yes sir. Gauges. Yes sir. So IT grade students must know that it should be around IT4, IT5. Yes sir. So if you can feel what is exactly IT4, IT5. Whatever you do in uh, machine shop, that is 6, 7, and 8, 9. Yes, sir. Uh, good operators can go up to 6, 7, 8. Yes, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. But not less than 6. So students must know that this is around 4 to 5. Super fine finish. Yes, sir. So, next you might have a question. Sir, what about the values? we require at a very high accuracy level. I want a particular value, the same value, whatever you have used, the object that you have used over here, I got this as 18 degree and 45 minutes. I want the same value in seconds. Then you have to go for indirect method, that is using a sign bar. Or else we can also go for optical type of measurements, 
using auto collimator or using laser interferometry, etc. So, we go to sign bar. This is what two cases. One is a sign bar and the other is a sign center. Take the example, in both the cases, we use a single principle called the sign principle or sign rule. You, you have all studied the sign principle or sign rule in your trigonometry classes. The sign of an angle theta formed between the upper surface of a sign bar and the surface plate is given by sine theta is equal to h by n. So this is your sign bar. Over here you can see this is the sign bar. These are the two rollers. These are the two rollers and there are some holes. What is the purpose of these holes? This does not help us in any kind of uh, measuring, but these are called as relief holes. See, this is a metal and the weight of the metal will add up to your uh, fatigueness while you are handling this. So to reduce the weight of the metal, yes, smallest one, 300 meters, sorry, 300 mm. So the standard sizes of uh, sign bars available is 50, 100, 200, 250 as well as 300. Even bigger sign bars are available, but for our laboratory purpose, we have up to 300 mm. Yes, we have these relief holes. Okay, so over here, whatever I said about uh, the standards being 50, 100, 200, 250 and 300, the distance is not between the two surfaces, it is between the center of the rollers. Over here you can see, uh, I have, the center of the roller 1 and roller 2, this distance is L, that is the standard length, it will not vary, the standard L will be 50, 100, 200, 250, 300 etc. Even we can go up to, there are sign bars measuring up to 1 meter also, but there is one uh, disadvantage, there will be sagging. You provide relief holes, there will be some amount of uh, sagging. You cannot avoid relief holes at the same time, you should be careful about that particular thing. So H is the height difference between two rollers. This is the height difference. You might ask, sir, what is this particular height? See, you cannot use a sign bar without a slip gauge. Say for example, if you want to set this sign bar at a particular angle, you need to have certain height on the other end. This has to be on the surface plate, this end has to be on the surface plate. The length is known, the angle is known, we need to find the height. Sometimes the height is known, the length is known, we need to find the angle. So H and theta can be unknown, one of them. L is a constant, we should either know the angle or we should know the height. So the role of slip gauges is most important. Without slip gauges, you can literally cannot be using a sign bar because only the slip gauges can give you the exact value of the height. So where H is the difference between uh, two rollers and L is the distance between the centers of the rollers. Therefore, H can be found out using this formula L sine theta and this is called the sign rule. So uh, just we'll discuss the different parts. This is the end phase of the sign bar, end phase, the top surface. These are the relief holes. Relief holes can be uh, of different uh, shapes and uh, sizes. This is the datum line that we have talked in uh, GDNT. This is with respect to the surface plate. These are the rollers, also called as the setting rollers. So it has to be perfectly ground and care has to be taken so that it does not wear out and even if it wears out, it has to be worn out evenly on both the rollers. Okay, <coughs> so we will be discussing about uh, sign bar in detail, sign bar as well as sign center in detail in the next class, how to set an angle, what is the maximum angle for which you can get a very good uh, accuracy. This has a limitation, you cannot measure anything above 45 degrees. You can measure, but the accuracy will not remain the same. We have an analytical uh, uh, for backup this. for this. Uh, there is a derivation which we will uh, give in case. Uh, to I think uh, uh, we can give the students a hint on how to find out that uh, difference. So 
there is a limitation for this whereas for our variable protection no such limitations but other limitation is we can restrict ourselves to minutes not for seconds okay so with this uh, we'll end, end this particular class and we'll meet once again in the next class discussing sign bar and sign center and uh, i thank all of you as well as uh, professor uh, dr nadkarti sir thank you sir for continue the sign bar then uh, we will also have a discussion regarding clinometer right and then comparison between all the three methods uh, among the th and this we are conducting the experiment as well in our uh, regular labs which one is among these three is the best and what are the advantage and uh, disadvantage each of each of these systems has its own advantage disadvantage for example like sign bar uh, no doubt it has got higher accuracy than this it can give you a minute but what about the limitation what about the time required it is an indirect method it doesn't give you a quick result so on that, that is another okay. result. so likewise we need to understand the intricacy of using and also the cost comes and the time so the choice of any method depends entirely on uh, the, our application our affordability the time required and its necessity so all these factors will determine which method we need to go for this otherwise if we need quicker and uh, better reliable results then of, of course we have uh, optical uh, means and uh, digital uh, outputs which are relatively very expensive but much reliable yeah. and also we'll try to discuss this particular example the two in this class a great level which is a class so not actually measuring in 